Second Sunday of Advent, it's a Sunday morning worship with your friends from St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Fairview, Pennsylvania. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's creation. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, a voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is Psalm 85, beginning with verse 1 and 2, and then eight, verses 8 through 13. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, and show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Our epistle reading comes from the second letter of Peter, the third chapter, beginning with the eighth verse. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise. And some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. 
Since all things are to be disclosed in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. for the hymn, Kate. The God, Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, glory to you, Lord Christ. This is the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I love the mixture of all the messages of the Advent season in our scriptures and in our other books. And we're really enjoying reading our book by Max Licato uh, with our group, uh, our, our two groups actually, our women's group and our men's group. The men are getting together a little bit earlier in the day, 6.30 in the morning, and, uh, and uh, we're actually enjoying the book and enjoying the conversation. One of the great gifts of Max Lucado is a way of making theology so accessible and yet not necessarily watering it down. And he, in this wonderful reading and series of videos, he's inviting us to contemplate what it is that we do in this Advent season, what it is that we're preparing for and who was this Jesus that we call Christ in our Christian tradition? It's interesting looking back through the scriptures, especially for today, where we're honoring prophets who foresee and, and are able to look at the situations in which we find ourselves and say, okay, if you continue along this path, this is what you're going to find. Or if you continue to do the things that you're doing, this is the damage you're doing to yourselves as persons in community. I love that idea of community, and I think Advent is a time of affirming our community 
Advent really means getting ready to share the good news, the Adventus, the coming of something wonderful. And I think that it is a time for us as a community to ask what good news we're sharing and what is the wonderful thing that we want to have that goes forward into the communities around us as Christian communities. We at St. Stephen's love the fact that St. Stephen itself is named after one of the very first martyrs, um, one of the first persons to suffer death as a result of their faith. Uh, and we'll be doing special things this Advent. We are, have our Advent boxes, um, our outreach boxes that we're collecting non-perishables throughout the season of Advent. And then come Christmas tide, we're going to get those off to uh, people and families who need them the most. Uh, I love the fact that we've already distributed 26 different boxes within the church community, and we have more to give. And if anybody else wants to join us, shoot me an email message, and I'll be happy to make sure you're a part of our community as, that, as well. But I also love the fact that Max Lucado, getting back to Max, is that the thing that he reminds me of is the very humanness of Jesus. In one passage, he talks about the wonder of and the pain of Mary having to tell her family of this unusual pregnancy, having to tell her betrothed, Joseph, of the unusual nature of her pregnancy, not having necessarily the kind of birth that she wanted, surrounded by friends and family. She's actually away from her home, surrounded by strangers, not even able to stay in, a, in an inn or a room or a place that was comfortable, but in a stable, along with the animals of a, of a household. And that's where she gave birth to Jesus, who was very human. Lucado says, remember that he also did all sorts of things. He went through puberty. He had pimples. He, he was as human as we could possibly imagine. And in our scriptures today, we're reminded that Jesus is actually God as well. God incarnate, God in the flesh, in the meat. Incarnate is what in the meat is another way of looking at the definition of that word. So we see Jesus as somebody who is exactly like us. And isn't that really what we long for in times of pain or suffering or disillusion or separation? And certainly the pandemic has done that for eight months. We are looking at great possibilities of reunions here in the future. But at the moment, we also notice something very specific about this example, uh, this pandemic, that it is keeping us separate. And what we're looking for is that sense of connection. So God incarnate, what Max Lucado invites us to reflect on, is that God is incarnate, that God does come to us in the flesh as a person, just like us. And I think that's what we have to remember that we are waiting for, that we are longing for. We are an Advent people. We literally exist between the wonderful resurrection and ascension of Christ and Christ's second coming. And we are waiting. And there are wonderful prophets like John the Baptist who says, look, I can bless you. I can dunk you. But Christ, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit will give you a sense of place and harmony and connection in the universe and will endow you with the wonderful love of God, the love of God that comes to you through the Spirit and the grace of God. That's what we are hoping for. And that's what we need to make space for during this time of Advent. So come Lord Jesus, we are making space for you. Amen. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Advent prayers to the people for year B. As we await the true light which enlightens everyone coming into the world, 
Let us pray to our God, saying, Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, we are all your people. As fear and doubt besiege us, let your bountiful grace and mercy send Justin, Michael, Sean, Martha, Sean, Zach, Mary, all of us, to proclaim, to bring good news to the oppressed, and to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to prisoners. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. We are all your people. As conflict and anger divide us, let your bountiful grace and mercy enrich us in speech and knowledge of every kind, and bring the obedience of faith to our leaders, Donald, Joseph, Thomas, Joe, and Kathy. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. We are all your people. As the grass withers and the flower fades, the world struggles. Let your bountiful grace and mercy create new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. We are all your people. As our children die from overdoses and meaningful work is difficult to find, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. We are all your people. As need and suffering surround us, let your bountiful grace and mercy lift up the lowly and fill the hungry with good things and heal and I invite your personal intercessions for the healing that needs to be in the world. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, we are all your people. Let your bountiful grace and mercy comfort the bereaved and bring us our depart, bring our departed to their eternal home. We pray for the souls of, and I invite your prayers for those who have passed in your life. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, we are all your people. As hope and trust sustain us, let your bountiful grace and mercy fill our hearts in thanksgiving for, and I invite all of your thanksgivings. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, we are all your people. Eternal God, we give this week into your hands. Make us ever mindful of your loving presence in good times as well as bad. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, we are all your people. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O Thou of God and man, the Son, Thee will I cherish, Thee will I honor, Thou my soul's glory, joy. Continue with our form for spiritual communion, and we start with the words that Jesus taught us when he walked with us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Our communion prayer. 
In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that they may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Our general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that, that, in our, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Jesus, we want to receive you in our hearts. We cannot do it in the sacramental way. Therefore, we ask you to come to fill us and uh, come to us and fill us with your presence, your peace, and your love. Grant us, Lord, the graces we need most. Amen. And now an Advent blessing. God, the Father of all, the darkness that covered the earth has given way to the bright dawn of your word made flesh. Make us people of the light. Make us faithful to your word that we may bring your life to the waiting world. And the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week. Shit.